Jam your hands for Jesus. Just clap the hands. Keep clapping the hands. The Lord is in the house. The Lord is in the house. The Lord is in the house. Jam the hands for Jesus. Jam the hands. Jam the hands. The Lord is on I. 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 Yes. Yes. We give God glory. We give God glory. Yes. Father, we thank you. We welcome the Holy Spirit in this house and we say thank you. Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name. And all the saints say loud, Amen. Amen. Jam their hands as you smile and sit. The glory of God is in the house. The glory of God is in the house. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time, Amen. We thank God for today's service. Today is the 14th day of our fast. 14th day of our fast. 21 days fast. 14 days of our fast. And I know that God is doing new things. Today we are praying against worldly pleasures. We are dealing with powers that will want us to fail. And we we'll overcome it. The devil cannot stop us. Will we overcome it? In Jesus' name. Amen. I have a message God has given to me this morning that I've entitled mystery of God's within room of life mystery of God's within room of life it's subtitled as delay is not denial so my message this morning will be talking about delay delay is not denial but the title of my message is mystery of God's within room of life the mystery of God's within room of life there is always a within room that the devil capitalizes to defeat us I beg you that you listen to this message this morning it's a message from God that will change our entire life. I welcome those that are watching us from Facebook and YouTube. I want to thank God for your lives, every one of you that have been commenting and sharing our messages on Facebook and YouTube. May God continue to bless you and may God continue to keep you. Look at your neighbor and tell that neighbor, Delay is not denial. At the end of this message, I'm going to be proving one or two things to you that you can establish in your own life to live a positive life. Hallelujah. Denial is synonymous to refuser. I repeat again, denial is synonymous to refuser. The closest word that you can match with denier is refuser. And it can also be synonymous to disapprover. It's also close to when a man is turned down or a woman is turned down. You know, in the worldly English, it can be referred to when people say, 
brush off. When you are brushed off. And in our own colloquial language, it can also be referred to rejection. So which means rejection is synonymous to denial. Denial is synonymous to rejection. But I've come to tell you that sometimes when certain things is vetoed as no. When sometimes you are refused or they write you a letter of regret after applying for application and you are written a letter of regret or you applied for a visa and they write you with regrets. It does not mean denial. When I was a young man, before my marriage, I had money. And I thought the money and my company will help me to get an American visa. I carried a detailed bank account to the embassy. I had cars, I had everything. But as I got there, I was denying the visa. It turned my whole life into rejection. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. As a young man, you went to American embassy and you are refused visa. I could not eat for two days. I could not eat for two days. But by the time I got married and I said I'm taking my wife to America for honeymoon. We married and I told my wife we have to go to this embassy. They rejected me six months ago, but now I have to go with you. And I went with my wife to American embassy that year in the 90s. And do you know what? I went there smiling, prepared. The lady intervened me, said, step back. Let your wife answer me. Uh, then I stepped back and my wife went forward and they just asked my wife two questions and it was approved that is the America I never stopped going that is the America that gives me multiple visas that is the America that gave me five years permits What am I trying to make you understand? There are times that in God's within room is saying not yet. Not yet. And when not yet is used for a response of a request does not mean no. Not yet does not mean no. And I believe that at that time, supposing I traveled to America as a single man, maybe I could have married somebody that we could have divorced a long time ago. I believe I'm talking to somebody here. In God's waiting room, when it's not yet, there is something that God is planning in your life. And that is protection and that is maturity. There are times we think that when something delays,
is in our life, we think that all is gone. We must understand today what God's within room is all about. This is where many Christians backslide because they always think that when a response is no, or when a response is refusal or regret, or when you are dismissed from a job, or when you are going through suffering or sickness, you believe that that is the end of your future. But I've come to talk to some people here. Do you feel defeated? Do you feel defeated? Do you feel troubled in life? Are you tired of waiting for an answer? Are you tired of being prophesied on and the prophecy is not coming true? Are you tired of getting promises and the promises are not establishing? My brothers and sisters, there's something I want to tell you this morning and only God can tell you that. Father, thank you. I give you glory, Lord Jesus. As you use me to speak to your children, I reduce myself, increase you in me. Holy Spirit, give me utterance to establish this word upon the heart of your children. That anyone going through delay, anyone going through denial, anyone going through regret or dismissal, rejection, suffering, struggling pain father give me words this morning to touch their heart and to revive them for the future in jesus name and all the saints say loud amen are you in denial In psychology, we say denial is a process of trying to reduce anxiety. I repeat again. In psychology, it's stated that it's a process to reduce anxiety. And in that process, you deny certain thoughts you deny certain feelings you deny certain facts that are consciously intolerable because you cannot tolerate it you deny it am i talking to saints but i have word for you this morning you don't need to deny your state of condition. You don't need to deny your present situation. Because it's God's room. It's God's waiting room for God to meet you at that point. That is the point that you can call God and God will answer you. I tell you the truth. God has never been defeated. And God can never and can never be defeated. God cannot fail in his promises. I am an example of who God has never failed. Don't let your fear and anxiety 
illuminate the promise of God. Am I talking to sense this morning? Look at your neighbor, say, don't let your fear and anxiety terminate the promise of God in your life. You need to understand God waiting room. If you cannot understand God's waiting room, you cannot be courageous and obedient to do the things of God. It's not about running around looking for prophecy. There are many prophecies that have not worked yet. Because you don't understand God's waiting room. Delay is not denial. I want you to give me Genesis chapter 3 verse 9 and 10. Genesis chapter 3 verse 9 and 10. New King James Version. Genesis chapter 3. I want you to look at what the Bible says. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? Verse 10. So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Please, I want you to understand something here. Things become difficult in our life when God cannot find you where he kept you. Things become delay in our life when God cannot find you where he kept you. God used to come down and have Peace, discussion, communication with Adam and Eve. But through the search of life, they enter into hiding. Hiding your true character will delay the promise of God. Hiding your true character. Hiding your true self. Hiding your behavior. Hiding your sin. Hiding what you have done wrong. Hiding your situation. Hiding your condition. Will delay your promises. Where are thou? They never knew what God has in his hands. To give to them. They never knew what God brought that cool evening to be a gift to them. It's not time to hide who you are. It's not time to pretend. It's not time to be who you are not. It's not time for your present situation, your present condition to remove you to be who God does not want you to be. It's time for you to be who God wants you to be. And don't let situation defeat you and distract you for the promise. I speak from the heart. The heart that God is speaking through at the moment. I speak through the Holy Spirit. God will always place you where he wants to find you. It can be your situation. It can be your suffering. It can be in your struggle. It can be in your poverty. It can be in your sickness. It can be in what you are going through at this moment. God has placed you in a waiting room wanting to come with a new blessings upon your life. 
Adam and Eve. We are Adam. They eat themselves. They move out of where God placed them. They move out of where God placed them because of situation, because of offense, because of anxiety, because of fear of the unknown. They move out from where God placed them. And I call it moving out of God's waiting room. Moving out of God's waiting room. Not yet does not mean denier. It was not yet for Adam and Eve to eat any fruit from that tree. It was not yet for Adam and Eve to touch the tree. It was not yet. When it is not yet does not mean no. Does not mean never. Does not mean rejection. God is denying you of something that will protect you. God is denying you of something that will give you anointing. That will make you matured in the season that you need it. I speak to the heart of people. That after this message this morning. You will reign in victory. I said you will reign in victory. God never wanted Adam and Eve to know evil. God, it was not the time. God wanted Adam and Eve to be matured spiritually. I am speaking from this altar. And I'm asking you this question this morning. Are you spiritually matured to handle situations? It's not about jumping around. You're jumping around. Hiding yourself. Hiding your sin. Will delay the promise of God. The mystery of God's weighted room. Of life it's a mystery that you need to connect to this morning it's a mystery that you need to understand when it is not yet God is waiting for you to march on. it's for a reason that God said to Adam and Eve this tree you should not touch but every other trees you can touch but from this tree you should not touch not yet adam and eve it's not yet for you to touch it and the feel that is denier and the devil will always want to make you feel that is denier Things go your way better when you know what the enemy knows. Look at your neighbor say, things go your way better when you know what the enemy knows. The moment you know what the enemy knows, things go your way better. You can, only you can only be defeated when you don't know what the devil knows. Give me Job chapter 13. I'll read from verse 1 to 3. Or verse 1 to 3, yes. Job 13. Look at what the Bible says in Job 13. Hallelujah. Are we there? Job 13, 1 to 3. My brothers and sisters, the mystery of God's waiting room is a mystery that you must understand that your present situation is a place that God wants to meet you. 
It's a place that God wants to meet you. We were in we were at Onyose worshiping for 10 years, but that was where God wants to meet us. Media give me Job 13 1 to 3. Are you getting me? So these are the things that we must understand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we must understand what God wants to do in our life. Look at what the Bible says in Job 13 verse 1. He said, behold, my eye has seen all this. My ear has heard and understood it. Verse 2. What you know, I also know. I am not inferior to you. Verse 3. But I will speak to the Almighty and I desire to reason with God. In many things that you do in life, always desire to reason with God. Man today don't reason with God because they think that they are under what? Denier. They think they are under denier. But what I've come to tell you this morning is if you don't know what Satan knows about you, you get defeated. Job spoke a word. He said, I know what you know. And I know it better. Until you start to understand that, that in every step you take, even in your situation, even in your condition, the devil knows that you know what he knows. But for you, do you really know what the devil knows about you? Give me Genesis chapter 3 verse 4. Let me establish something. The devil always wants to distract you of what you know. Genesis 3 verse 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Genesis 3 verse 4 says, Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. Please focus your eye on the word. The serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. What do you think that is happening there? Because the woman was afraid of death. The woman was afraid of death. Satan knew that the woman was afraid of death. What you are afraid of, that is what the devil used to fight you. If you are afraid of failure, the devil will use failure to fight you. If you are afraid of getting married, not to get divorced, the same thing the devil will use to fight you. Satan used what you know and what you know is what Satan used to fight you. May you know what Satan knows. That is why the Bible says, be wiser than the serpent. Be wiser than the serpent. We need to be wiser than the serpent. The serpent encouraged Eve and look at how he encouraged Eve. The serpent said, you will not surely die. Try it. You will not surely die. 
Let me tell you the truth. There is difference between physical death and there is difference between spiritual death. If you die spiritually, you lose everything physically. The two are death. The two are death. Because Adam and Eve did not die physically does not mean that they didn't die spiritually. They died spiritually because the connection of their breakthrough, the connection of their open doors, the connection of their peace, the connection of everything that will bring prosperity to them was cut off, died. The connection to whatever that bring peace to them, joy to them, was cut off. And they were driven from their place of peace and joy. Is it not death? They died spiritually. But the devil was trying to make her understand that you will not die. You will not surely die. Yes, it is true. Let me tell you, the devil always come as a light to deceive you. With what you know. And when Eve ate the fruit, look at the way it operates. After Eve have eaten the fruit, I believe the serpent could have laughed. <laughs> Can't you see what I'm telling you? Did you die? Go and give it to your husband. Show your husband some love with delicacy of this fruit. That is how some of us with pleasure will lose the opportunity of waiting in God's room. Brothers and sisters, it's time for you to understand God waiting room. In God's waiting room, there are many things that takes place. I believe that some of us, as we are seated here, or those of you watching me from Facebook or YouTube, you are at God's waiting room right now with your condition. It can be sickness. It can be, it can be a delayed miracle. It can be an unanswered promise. You can be at, your, at God's waiting room. All I've come to tell you, there are keys I'm going to give you this morning. When you are on, when you are waiting in God's waiting room, please can you give me Job chapter one verse nine? Job one verse nine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at what the Bible says. It says, "So Satan." Answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made an edge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his ends and his possessions. Have increased in the land. Now, this is what Satan know about Job. That Job have protection. And the only way the devil can deal with you is to take you out of your place of protection. That was what he did to Eve and Adam took them out of the place that God used to meet them. And God never met them anymore. God only decreed upon them. God only laid a curse upon them. He never met them anymore. If you try to do things by your own self, or you try to go for fetish means or diabolical means 
you are out of God's waiting room. The moment you try to look for help in the wish doctor's angle, in the Abali's house, you are out of God's waiting room. You are out of God's waiting room. He told God, is it not because you put a protection around him? For some of us, God has given protection not to fall sick. God has given protection financial breakthrough. God has given protection. Let me tell you, there are some of you women, you give birth in peace. But there are some that struggle to give birth. And they never gave birth normal. They gave birth with operations. Your conditions can be different from other people's conditions. But it might be that you are in God's waiting room. May God help us to wait in his room. To get the promises and the, and the presence of God. Satan knows. So the only way that he can move Job out of his place of promise is to curse him. Is to frustrate him. Is somebody hearing me? Is to frustrate him. And that is why you must understand that the devil is so tricky. What did he do to Job? Give me Job 19, verse 13 to 19. Job 13, and Job 19. Job 19, look at it. He knew that Job had protection. Hallelujah. Look at it. Please follow me. Satan knew that Job had protection. Is it not so? So what he tried to do is to frustrate him. Is to make him suffer defeat. Is to make him struggle. Is to make him lose what he has. But look at Job. Look at this. He said, He has removed my brothers far from me. And my acquaintance are completely estranged from me. That is number one. Number two, my relatives have failed and my close friends have forgotten me. <laughs> that is number two. Number three, those who dwell in my house and my maid servants count me as a stranger. I am an alien in their sight because of the sickness, COVID-19. Those who dwell in my house and my maid servants count me a stranger. I am an alien in their sight. Verse 16. I call all my servants, but he gives me no answer. Disrespect. I beg him with my mouth. 17. My breath is offensive to my wife because I cannot wash my tongue because of the sore wound in my tongues. My teeth, I cannot brush it because of wound that are all around my gum. And I am repulsive to the children of my own body. 18. Even young children despise me. I arise and they speak against me. 19. All my close friends adore me. 
And those who I love have turned against me. What a wicked world. What a wicked attack. And in all this, Job stood and said, I know my Redeemer leave it. What are you going through? Can you count all those things you are going through? And you are there being offended that someone did not greet you. You start to keep malice that somebody did not greet you good morning or good afternoon. Or they did not even put good. They tell you afternoon. You become repulsive. Can you see what Job went through so that the edge around him can be taken away? Did you see what Job went through? Even his own wife was repulsive to his breath. The snoring takes the wife away from the room and he went to sleep on that room. Because the wife believes that the snoring is disturbing him, uh, disturbing her. When the snoring of your husband starts to become responsive to you, you have lost that marriage. You have lost that marriage. When your wife starts to become a smelling, smelling object to you, you have lost that marriage. When you start to refuse to kiss your wife mouth to mouth that you used to do because you say the husband must go and wash teeth first. I believe that before your marriage, you kiss without washing teeth. When things start to become repulsive to you, things that you accommodated in the past become repulsive to you, know that there's something that God wants to, uh, that the, the devil wants to take away from you. The devil was trying to deal with the protection of Job. But what happened? Job remained in the what? God's waiting room. I know my Redeemer leave it. They are miserable comforters. What will be your answer when someone disappoints you? What will be your answer when someone refuses to go for an errand for you, your boys, your girls, they don't want to touch your clothes, they don't want to touch your shoes, they don't want to touch anything that pertains to you because you are sick or you recovered from COVID. Am I talking to you? My brothers and sisters, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 55 verse 8 that God's ways are not our ways. And our ways are not God's ways. You can plan everything you want to plan. You can arrange whatever thing you want to arrange. Your plan can fail you. Because God's ways are not our ways. God's plan are not our plans. And that is why you need to be in the waiting room of God. That is why you need to be there. You might think God have given up on you. That is your thought. But it's not the thought of God. The Bible says the thought of God 
is to bless you and give you peace. That is why God's timing most time disappoint man. You must know that in the waiting room of God, your time is not his time. And his time is not your time. A thousand years in a man's eyes is one day in God's eyes. It's the same thing to parents and their children. Your child might ask you of a new shoe or a new shirt. And you delayed because your salary have not entered your account. Is it not so? But the child will not know that the salary has not entered your account because you cannot tell your child, let my salary enter my account first. Life is so simple. Take your understanding to follow God. Sometimes God keep quiet, not because he wants to keep quiet, it's because you are so frustrated and so pushy to touch his thoughts, to do what he doesn't want to do. He said, no man that his children would demand for bread and he give them serpents or stones. You might delay, but the time to buy that child, that thing he requested, you will buy double for that child. I believe, parents, you do that. That is how God operates in our lives. Let me give you some keys, then I close this morning. Keys to remain in God's within room. Keys to remain in God's within room. Number one, righteous focus. Righteous focus. Look at your neighbor, say, Righteous focus. Isaiah 26 verse 2 to 6. Hallelujah. Number one key is righteous focus. Hallelujah. The Bible says... In that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judea. That is verse 1. Verse 2, let me start from verse 2. Verse 2 says, Open the gates that the righteous nation will keep the truth which keeps the truth may enter in. Underline that word in your Bible. Open the gates that the righteous nation which keeps the truth may enter in. Are you getting that? So which means the gates, open gates, open doors will be open for those righteous which keeps the truth may enter. Underline truth and underline righteous. Then verse 3. Look at verse 3. That is what I want to say. Verse 3 say, you will keep him that you is God. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because it trusts in you. Hmm. Righteous focus. Whose mind is stayed on you. Look at that word, 
whose mind is stayed. The is is present tense. So which means your mind must not be in past tense. Your mind must always be in present tense. Whose mind is stayed. Perfect peace can never be gotten in the market. Perfect peace can never be gotten in the tender that you have. Perfect peace can never be gotten in the girlfriend you just got. Can never be gotten in the boyfriend you just met. Can never be gotten in the promises that you have been given by your husband. Can never be gotten in the promises or the new car you bought for your wife. Perfect peace is gotten from those that focus. Those whose mind are righteously what? Focus. Choose not, look at your neighbor say, choose not to be stressed or frustrated. Say it so your neighbor can hear you. Say, choose not to be stressed or, fo- or frustrated. By your problems or by your situation. Choose not to be stressed. Don't let your situation, don't let your condition stress you out. Don't let your condition depress you. Perfect peace can only be gotten from those minds that are righteously focused. The Bible cannot tell you lies. Can you give me that scripture again? Isaiah 26 verse 3. You must stay focused. You cannot enter perfect peace when your mind does not stay focused. When your mind does not stay focused, look at it again and say, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because it trusts in you. Do you trust in God? Righteous focus. Put your mind on the true source of perfect peace. And who is the true perfect peace? God himself. Put your mind not in your situation. Put your mind not in your circumstances. Put your mind not in the storm of life. Put your mind not in your problems. Put your mind not in your sicknesses. Put your mind not in your struggle or suffering. Put your mind not in your poverty. Put your mind not in your struggle or your worries. Put your mind righteously focused on God. Matthew 14 verse 29, 30, it says, The moment Peter Focus on the storm. It starts sinking. The moment Peter focus on the storm. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Verse 30. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he saw the storm. Some people don't understand that way. He saw the storm. He saw the storm. He saw death. He saw the storm. He saw problem. He saw the storm. He saw, when they say boisterous, do you know what boisterous means? Was violent. When a storm start to speak to you, Bostorius means that the wave was speaking. 
boisterous. It means that the wave, the storm, has voice. And in those words, Peter was understanding this is death, oh, this is death, oh, this is death. Understand that language, boisterous. So the wind was coming with language. The wind was coming with interpretations. Peter don't sink for nothing. He starts sinking when he focused on the storm. Storm of life is a distraction to your destiny. Your problems are distractions to your destiny. The sickness that you are going through are distraction to your destiny. Stay in God's waiting room. An answer is coming. Stay in God's waiting room. An answer is coming. Don't listen at the posterior wings of your situation. Don't look at the boisterous wind of your debts that you have not paid. Every day has an answer to your situation. If you can eat every day, you can get same solution of victory every day. If you can put on clothes and you are not naked every day, your situation can still be clothed every day Peter start to sink because he focus on the posterior wind may you overcome every posterior wind in your life may you overcome trials and situations in your life not let fear rule you and don't ever you allow fear to rule you there are many distractions in our daily lives. Many distractions in our daily lives. And that is why you need to stand on Deuteronomy 28 verse 7. You will never be defeated. Those who rise against you, anything they try to use against you, they will not overcome you. Deuteronomy 28 verse 7. Let me read it. The Lord will seize your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face they shall not come out against you one way they shall come out against you one way and flee before you in seven ways may your situation scatter in seven ways may it be destroyed in seven ways the problem will come in one way but they will scatter and destroy in seven ways you are a son of the most high you are the daughter of the most high you cannot fail not yet does not mean a denier not yet does not mean rejection not yet does not mean that you have failed wait in God's waiting room that is where God placed Adam and Eve but they ran away where God has placed them because they want a fast, a fast blessings. They needed fast blessings. May it not be a portion. May it not be a portion. Number two, disobedience. Number two, obedience. 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 Keep you in the house. In the room where God will meet you. When you are, when you have total obedience in something, you love that thing with all your heart. You love that thing with all your heart. If you buy a car, Powerful car. Do you know that every day you'll be checking the oil if it's reduced? Why are you checking the oil? 
you love the car and you don't want that car to knock you shake your water you shake your oil why do you shake your oil why do you shake your water because you love that engine and you don't want it to be destroyed you go by obeying the instruction put water and put oil you obey but how many of us love God and yet we don't want to obey his instruction take God like your own vehicle that you bought new your vehicle like that and take God that you check your oil you check your engine obedience can you give me Matthew 22 verse 33 37 obedience when you have strong love for God you will fight and defend the relationship you will be confident that God is your protector, your shield, and your maker. Look at what the Bible says. Matthew 22. Jesus said to him, you, should, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Finish. Sefini. You should love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. That is the way that obedience is established. You don't say you, you love God and you don't obey his instructions. Just the same way you cannot leave the door of your house open at night if you love your life. Am I talking to you? Those of you that stay in Katatura, can you leave your door open at night? Even those of you that stay in Pioneer's Park, even those of you that stay in Rocky Crest, can you leave your door open at night? Because you love your you love your life. So you will obey the rule of closing your doors. Life is simple. Life is simple. Can you give me Psalm 31 verse 23? Psalm 31 verse 23. Look at what the Bible says. Say, oh, love the Lord, all you is saints. For the Lord preserves the faithful and fully repays the proud person. God preserves the faithful. The moment you become obedient, the moment you become faithful to the instructions of God, let me tell you, doors are open for you. God can only meet you where he places you. It's not ignorant of your presence. It's not ignorant of where you are. That was why when Peter was sinking, the only thing he could do was righteous focus. He called on Jesus. Jesus, save me. And did he walk on the water? Yes, he walked. Because it was at the middle of the water. So Jesus did not carry him on the back. Jesus did not fly with him. They walked out of the water. 
did Peter sink? Peter never sank. The Bible says he was sinking. He was sinking. He was. Whatever it was that have brought you down will take you up. Wait in God's waiting room. Obedience. The moment you are faithful, God takes you to another level of life. And that is what you need to understand. Number three. Can you be found trustworthy? Can you be found trustworthy of being called a child of God? Can you be found trustworthy? God does not release or reveal his timing. That is why it's so critical for you to wait. God does not reveal his timing. God does not reveal the details of his promise to man. Because if God releases his promise and details, you will not trust him. You will not trust him. Can anyone find you trustworthy in doing the work of God? Can anyone find you faithful by renewing your mind from negative to positives? The Bible says grace is upon those who are trustworthy. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 12 and 15. Grace is upon those who are trustworthy. Grace. Look at it. He said, and I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the word ministry. Verse 15. Let's jump to 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Jesus came to save sinners. Apostle Paul in this statement said he is found trustworthy to be called to do the work of God because once in his life he persecuted the church he killed church people betrayed church people George, church people defended the world and they put church people to prison and killed church people. But one, the moment he had a counter with Jesus Christ, he confessed his sin openly and he was found trustworthy. Can you be found trustworthy? Are you still hiding your obedience of God? Are you still hiding your Christianity in your father's house? Are you still hiding your Christianity in your mother's house that does not accept Oshiveva or being born again? Are you still hiding, being trustworthy? Can you be found trustworthy to serve God 100%? My brothers and sisters, Joseph was found trustworthy. Even when Potiphar's wife wanted to seduce him, 
He had a dream that can never be exchanged with compromise. Joseph was a dreamer and they knew him as a dreamer and he entered the prison as a dreamer and he came out from the prison as a dreamer and become a prime minister as a dreamer. Will you continue to do what you used to do for God and never look back? Even despite what people have done to you. Even despite the accusation, the wrong evidences, the accusation, the backbiting, the backstabbing. Will you stand to still do what you want to do for God? Will you stand to defend Christianity? Will you stand to defend Christ? Trusting God is leaning on him. Look at your neighbor, say fear not. Say it like you mean it. Tell your neighbor, say fear not. Say it very boldly. Number four is patient. When you are in God's waiting room, you must have patience. When you are in God's waiting room, you must have what? Patience. Psalm 40 verse 1. Psalm 40 verse 1. You have to put your confidence in him. You have to put your trust in him. Look at it. I waited patiently for the Lord and inclined to me and what heard my cry. God can only meet you where he wants you to be. Don't try to first thing. Look at your neighbor and say, don't try to first thing. Trust in him. Don't try to first things. Don't try to manipulate things. Don't try to compromise things. Your compromise will give you enjoyment for five years. And that is all. Your compromise will give you two years of excitement. Enjoying buildings and cars. And lose your eternity. The will of God. The will of God. Can you be found in a patient zone? Give me Hebrew 9.28. Hebrew 9.28. Hebrew 9.28. Look at what the Bible says. So Christ was offered once to bear the sin of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. Can you give me another version? Can you give me another version? I need another version so that we can, we can see what the Bible is saying. Give me another version. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation is by choice. I, is somebody getting me? Salvation is by choice. Salvation is by what? By choice. The moment you feel that Jesus is delaying, you lose your salvation. Look at it, he said. So also Christ was offered once for all time as a sacrifice to take away the sins of many people. He will come again, not to deal with our sin, but to bring salvation to all. 
Jesus is not coming again for sinners. Jesus has come for sinners already. Jesus is coming not for sinners again. He's coming to bring salvation to those that are patient waiting for him. Those that are patient waiting for him. That is those that is coming for. Don't forget our fasting today destroying worldly pleasures. Number five. Fight with the word of God. Prayer. Fight with the word of God. Can you give me Luke chapter 4? I want to start from verse 3. Start from verse 3. Look at verse 3. The Bible says, And the devil said to him, If you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. If you are the son of God. Now, my question to you, Brethren, deacons, deaconesses, evangelists, pastors, leaders, elders, are you a child of God? Are you a son of God? Are you a daughter of God? This was the question. If you are the son of God, can you doubt yourself and say, I am not a child of God? Can you doubt yourself and say, because of your troubles, tribulation, that you are no more child of God, then you won't help from the devil. Look at what he said in verse 4. Look at what he said in verse 4. But Jesus answered him saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Underline that word. That is what I want, to, I, want to, I want to express to you. By every word of God. Every word of God. You cannot defeat the devil. You cannot defeat pleasures with nothing except the word of God. If you have the word of God, you are fully equipped to defeat the devil. Verse 8. Verse 8. And Jesus answered again and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written again, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve God. Verse 12. And Jesus answered and said to him, It is has been said it is written it has been said you shall not tempt the Lord your God God again you must be righteous focus you must be righteously focused you must be obedient you must be trustworthy You must fight battles. Not because you have a problem that you cannot solve. God is present in every situation that you find yourself. Don't try to manipulate things. This is a season whereby God has placed many of us in a waiting room. People that he wants to make millionaires. People, he wants to make good housewives. People, he wants to make great men and women of God. People he want to raise to be financier of ministries. You are in that waiting room because God is about to take you to become an anointed servant of God to break yokes. God wants to use you to bring down mountains. 
barrenness will be broken in God's waiting room. All productivity will be broken in God's waiting room. Children that you are bringing up should be able to have the fear of God if their father have the fear of God. You want your children to have fear of God and you the father, you the mother does not even fear God. What comes out from your mouth every day is insult because of anger and offense. May God in his infinite mercy answer you quick. May the angel of your blessings bring such blessing on time. And every prince of Greece, every prince of, of, of Greek, every prince of Winduk, every prince of Namibia that wants to stop your incoming blessing, may they be destroyed. May they fall and die. Any power that wants to take what belongs to you that is not theirs by the power of the almighty God may such powers be powerless. By the instructions of our fasting today may the fasting of today destroy every worldly pleasure that wants to distract us. May every sickness that have come to your life receive healing right now. Every sickness that have come to you as long as you are in God's waiting room I command healing upon you. I command healing upon you. I command grace to make it upon you. I command grace to fly above your problems. May supernatural anointing come upon you. May supernatural favor come upon you. May the favor you have not received in 20 years be a favor that will come upon you. Favor to make it. Favor to advance. Favor to be successful. Favor to progress. Favor to go higher and never come down. Every weapon fashion against you today may such weapon be broken may such weapon never progress may such weapon never prosper it is written they will come in one way they will scatter in seven ways it is written that no power that will raise their tongue against you will prosper every kneel that fashion seen or by bite or or try to backstab you such kneel will bow such kneel will bow mouth that speak evil against you mouth that speak evil against your destiny mouth that want to make you stagnated by the reason of our fasting today I arrest that power and I subject that power into pain Every fallen angel on assignment to destroy you, may they remain in prison. 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 Barrenness is broken this morning. Barrenness is broken this morning. Poverty is broken this morning. Sickness receive your healing. Sickness receive your healing. Suffering, I bind you. Struggling, I bind you. I bind you. Destruction, I bind you. Delay is not denial. God has sent me with blessings. And I say, receive that blessings. Receive the blessing. 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 
Receive the blessing. Receive the blessing. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every wicked power. Holy Ghost. Fashion against you in coven of wishes, in coven of witchcraft, such coven catch fire. Amen. I command such coven to catch fire. Amen. I command such coven to catch fire. Amen. Where you have failed, where you have been disappointed, where you have been regret, you 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 add regrets. I command those positions to be available for you. Amen. I command those positions to be available for you. Amen. I command those positions to be available for you. Debt you could not pay. I command God divine blessing to come upon you to pay your debt. Amen. People that don't like your face, when they see you from today, they will light your face by force. May heaven open to answer your cry. 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 May you never be backward anymore. Backward never in your life. May you never be backward again. 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 May every posterior wind speaking negative things into your ear. May such wind cease. May such wind cease. May such wind cease. Every storm of poverty, complaint, and murmuring that has come upon your life, I command such to die. Amen. Everything that have taken your smiles, everything that have taken your joy, everything that have taken your peace, I command them to return it back to you. Amen. I command them to return it back to you. I command them to return it back to you. I say back. Back to me. Receive your blessing. Receive your peace. 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 Every trap, every nest, the evil ones have set against you will catch their owners. Amen. I said the evil trap will catch their owners. Amen. The evil net will catch your own. Amen. Anyone that has spoken evil against your destiny, may it boomerang. Amen. May it boomerang. Amen. May it boomerang. Amen. May it boomerang. Amen. Say, I take a new walk into my favor. I take a new walk into my favor. Say, I take a new step into my favor. I take a new step into my favor. And I take back my favor. And I take back my favor. In the name of Jesus. Name of Say, I turn, around. I, turn around. I turn around. I turn around. I turn around. For freedom. For freedom. I am free. 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 Say every chain of bondage. Every chain of bondage. I break you. 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 I break you apart. You foul spirit of stagnation, of stagnation that have entered into my life to stagnate my future. Stagnate I my future. kick you out. I kick you out. Out, of out of my life. Out of my life. Out. 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 Power that comes to molest you in your dream. May they start to be consumed by fire. Amen. I said, may they be consumed by fire. Amen. Dream hunters, dream killers, I command you to die. Amen. I command you to die. Amen. Dream distractors, dream manipulators, your time has expired. Amen. Say, expire out of my life. 
You dream distractors. You dream killers. You dream killers. Out of my life. Out of my life. Out. 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 Say, I, op- I enter my open door. I enter my open door. And I take everything that belongs to me. And I take everything that belongs to me. I enter my open door. I enter my open door. I take my new opportunities. I take my new opportunities. I enter my open door. I enter my open door. I take my new health. I take my good health. Clean health. Clean health. Clean health. Clean health. Clean health. Clean health. No sickness. No sickness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey! Jehovah Shammah. I see you everywhere. Oh yeah. Blessed Redeemer. Your glory. Your glory fills the earth.
Father, we give you glory. We give you praise yes, to God for your anointing. You are Father, we thank you. you are we give Adonai. you glory, Lord. You are the King we say thank you. Emmanuel we say thank you. You we are my God, thank you. Thank you. you are my redeemer. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. 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 Thank you, Jesus, we thank God for what he has done. We give you glory. We are logging off from Facebook and YouTube at this moment. We want to sign off from Facebook and YouTube. Glory be to God. Those of you that have watched us from Facebook, from YouTube, may God bless you. May the anointing be upon you. May Jehovah Shama be your blessing. May all open doors be open for you. May all closed doors open by force in the name of Jesus. God bless you for sharing and God bless you for commenting. Bye those of you on Facebook. Hallelujah. Children of God, I want to hear three loud hallelujah.